just say a few words about our security uh, model. So when con considering security uh, computation, we basically have three um, main adversarial models. The first uh, uh, adversary that we consider is the semi-honest adversary. Uh, in this case, uh, we assume that the adversary follows the protocol specification, but may try to learn some additional information from the messages that he sees. The covert adversary, which is rather um, a new model, was introduced recently by Uman and Linda, and uh, in this case, uh, it is assumed that the adversary may cheat, but it, is, uh, it takes a big risk by uh, getting caught. So this is more, slightly more realistic uh, uh, scenario. And um, in the malicious, for the malicious adversary, we, which we are going to focus in this talk, is uh, basically an adversary that we do not assume any uh, assumption regarding, regarding his uh, strategy or behavior. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, the only assumption is that it is computationally bounded. So this is our setting. And um, uh, our proof works for the, in the ideal real paradigm. Uh, basically, we have two settings, the real and the ideal. Uh, where in the ideal setting, there is a, a trusted party which is uncorruptible, where the parties just send their inputs and receive their output. And in the real setting, we, the party just communicate uh, using some protocol. And in order to claim that the protocol is secure, what you need to prove essentially is that for every adversary in the real setting, there exists an adversary in the um, ideal setting, such that uh, the adversary's view, the messages that he sees, are essentially the same. So since there there does not exist an attack that can be carried out in the ideal setting, perhaps except for set, uh, changing the adversary's input, we can claim that the protocol is secure. So this is the ideal real paradigm. So the prior work regarding uh, certain intersections, so there has been much extensive work in this, uh, we're computing this uh, function um, securely, and uh, there are uh, two main techniques. The first technique is using pseudorandom functions. Just, I'm going to elaborate a bit more towards the end of the talk. Um, I just want to say that all the previous work uh, for uh, using these techniques either worked um, in, uh, uh, um, a limited, uh, in the limited setting of the covert, or used the smart card, uh, or assumed something about the domain of, uh, of uh, the universe where the elements are taken from. Much more work has been done using in the, in the polynomial, using polynomial evaluation technique. So in, I'm going to focus on the malicious two-party setting, and for this setting, we have uh, uh, the F and P uh, work, which is our starting point for this work by uh, Friedman, Nisim, and Pinkas. Uh, their solution for the malicious setting uh, required random oracle, which I'm going to talk about it uh, in, uh, soon. Uh, and uh, other, uh, all the other papers using this technique introduced quadratic uh, complexity. I'm going to show in a minute. Uh, I just want to say that we combine this in this uh, paper, we combine these two techniques in order to achieve efficient solution for the malicious setting under standard assumption, meaning no random oracle. So uh, let's just uh, overview uh, this technique. So uh, in polynomial evaluation, you can think of uh, as uh, one of the parties input, x, as the set of rules for some polynomial. And uh, to compute this polynomial, you basically multiply all these uh, uh, polynomials of degree one. So it's like saying that the polynomial zeros on this, uh, on this set, uh, basically Q of Z equals zero if and only if Z is in the set. A useful tool that we are going to use and was also used for previous solutions is the homomorphic encryption. Uh, we consider homomorphic with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. Um, it's very easy to see that using homomorphic encryption, we can evaluate polynomial obliviously. 
without learning, without knowing the coefficients of the, of the polynomial. The security requirement for this uh, uh, type of primitive is that uh, it would be um, infeasible or even impossible for even unbounded adversary to know whether uh, the encryption is encryption of M1 plus M2, which was computed using the homomorphic property, or uh, this is uh, an encryption of M1 uh, plus M2, which was randomly chosen regardless of uh, the encryptions that I had before. And the most uh, popular candidate is the Palier encryption scheme, uh, which is used for um, additive homomorphism. So how does uh, the solution of F and P work? Basically, Alice computes uh, the polynomial Q based on uh, the set X. She encrypts this polynomial using homomorphic encryption and said, sends this encryption to Bob. Bob uh, evaluates uh, the, the polynomial in some specific way. He computes Q of Y using the homomorphic encryption, then multiply with some randomness, this is scalar multiplication, and add Y. Why do we add Y? <laughs> exactly for the uh, property that Alice decrypt and then she can uh, uh, extract the, the values that are in the intersection, right? Because if Y is in the intersection, then she would learn Y. Otherwise, she would learn something random. Um, so just note that uh, uh, this introduces quadratic uh, complexity. Why? Because the degree of the polynomial is the size of the set. Right? So for every polynomial evaluation, Bob has to work in the size of the set, and the, the amount of work is um, the size of X times the size of Y, which is really huge if we consider large databases. So in order to reduce the, uh, the complexity in the FNP, FNP came up with the idea of using balanced allocation hash function. So, so what is balanced allocation hash function? Certainly, it's essentially hash function, not in a cryptographic sense, just a shrinking function, which has uh, basically a pair of functions. So um, each element is being inserted or mapped into the less occupied bin. This was all, uh, shown by um, Alich, a brother, Kalich, and Uppal from 99. And uh, uh, what they showed is very high, with, with very high probability over the choice of the hash functions, uh, we can get that uh, the size of, of the number of elements that are mapped into each bin would be uh, O of log log n, where n is the size of the, set, the size of the sets which are uh, which elements are being mapped. So um, by setting the parameters. Uh, fixing the parameters properly, we get that uh, um, the, 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 the amount of, of, of the, the communication complexity that we have is exactly, is linear in the size of the set. However, uh, the, the computations, each, each polynomial now would be, will have degree of log long, which I'm going to show now. Uh, so the amount of work would be log log the size of the set, which is much uh, um, smaller than x times y. So how do we use this uh, balanced allocation hash function here? So the F and P basically um, propose this solution. Given uh, uh, H0 and H1, which can be chosen by both parties, Alice maps uh, her set into uh, the appropriate beans. Okay, so now she has B polynomials instead of one, but the degree of each polynomial is log log. And she encrypts these polynomials and sends to Bob. Now, for every element in Bob's sets, he has to evaluate both uh, 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 candidate polynomials because he does not know which polynomial was evaluated by Alice. So essentially, he evaluates these two polynomials and sends, it, sends them back. So this solution works perfectly for the semi-honest setting, very, very, very nice and very efficient. But when trying to move to the malicious setting, it's much more problematic. So let's see what we need, 
which problem do we need to solve in order to um, deal with malicious behavior? So the first problem was that um, who can, how can we force Bob to use or to evaluate the same Y? For instance, Bob can use Y1 and Y2, two different Ys when he evalu for single evaluations which means that Alice would output Y2 if and only if Y1 is in the intersection. This means that not only that we cannot simulate it, we have an actual attack of, uh, uh, in the, that independence of input does not uh, hold in this protocol. So in order to overcome these problems, uh, FNP came with this very nice idea in the random oracle, which works as follows. Instead of computing, uh, in, instead of adding y, uh, Bob will add some randomness, some random value s, where uh, the entire randomization that is required for the computation comes from h of s, where h is the random oracle evaluation on s. So he first chooses s, then computes h of s, and then uses the output of the random oracle to re-randomize the entire computation, including the R that he multiplies by Q of Y. Now, when Alice decrypts this encryption, she, and in case Y is in the intersection, she knows, she learns S, she has an access to random oracle, so she compute H of S, and she can recompute the entire uh, evaluation as Bob did. So she can verify that he computed it honestly. So the first problem, the first question is, can we do it without the random oracle? And the question is yes. Uh, so we, we use instead, we replace the random oracle with a, a, a pseudorandom function. So pseudorandom function is a key the function where uh, that looks like, the, the output looks like a random, uh, a random function to any computationally bounded uh, uh, observer. So basically the idea would be that Bob choose key for the PRF uh, if, uh, for pseudorandom function and then use the output of the PRF to uh, re-randomize the computation instead of the output of the random oracle. Okay, so it computes exactly the same but the randomness comes from the uh, output of the PRF instead of the random oracle. Of course, the problem now is that Alice doesn't know K. She doesn't know the key, and we need to, uh, to show how can she learn F of K, F of S using K. Uh, so in order to, uh, to show you uh, how to do it, I want to introduce the, the pseudorandom function evaluation functionality. So basically, uh, in, we have two parties where one party holds the key for the PRF and the other party holds the input for the PRF. And um, the output would be for the party, in this case Bob, learn the evaluation of the PRF over this input. The security requirement from this function, functionality, would be that Alice should not learn anything about X while Bob should not learn anything but f of x. So, what would be, how can we use this functionality for our solution? Um, Alice would decrypt both polynomial evaluations. Remember that Bob has to evaluate two polynomials because he doesn't know which one was evaluated by Alice. And uh, uh, she uses, so if, if, if the value, if, if y is indeed in the intersection, one of these decryption would give s, right? So she needs to use one of these uh, for the polynomial evaluation functionality. However, we created a new problem because now Alice has two potential inputs and she doesn't know which one to use for the pseudorandom function evaluation. So, um, so basically, how do we solve this problem? This actually solves another, a different problem also, but basically we have Bob commits before, uh, before Alice even sends the polynomial to Y. So this is kind of tricky because there is no randomness in the commitments in a sense that he uses the same S that 
that he uses for the polynomial evaluation. So uh, it was non-trivial to prove that the commitment is still hiding something. But basically, he uses Y and the randomness S that he's going to use next for the polynomial evaluation. And this is necessary for Alice to verify against these commitments which S is the correct S that she should use for the evaluation, for the PRF evaluation. Uh, so all of these for the first problem. <laughs> okay, not much left to go. Um, so as we said, the balanced allocation uh, requires two polynomials evaluations. And now we have to force Bob to use the same value in both polynomials because by substitution, substituting or evaluating two different uh, values may help him to learn some additional information because he, he can observe Alice's uh, uh, output or Alice's behavior according to what he sends. So uh, how, do, uh, how do we force him? So one solution would be to say, okay, let's uh, uh, evaluate each polynomial separately and then multiply the result, and then continue as before, just multiply by some random R that we get from the PRF of S. Of course, this does not work because we need fully homomorphic encryption for this, since the polynomial evaluation requires additive homomorphic, and now we need to multiply the two evaluations. So, if you want to come up with some efficient solution, uh, we don't know how to do it. So the solution would be to use El Gamal, but in some, some tweak uh, way. How do we do it? So recall that the El Gamal, uh, the secret key is apart from the group description and the, the generator is some alpha. And G to the alpha is the, uh, is the public key. And in order to encrypt uh, a message G to the T, we basically choose some random beta and uh, output G to the beta and G to the alpha beta times M. This is the ciphertext. So Elgamal enable, uh, enables us to, uh, um, to do additive or morphic, but in the exponent. And also uh, multipl multiplicative homomorphic which is the standard notion, uh, the usage of Elgamal. So basic, basically what we are going to do is we evaluate the polynomial in the exponent, including the multiplication by some randomness R, but multiply S, uh, a, a, as in the original standard notion of Elgamal, with this evaluation. So note that if the, the, the value is in the intersection, then all the exponent is canceled to be zero, and Alice can learn S. Okay, this introduces some separatists, which I'm not going to um, get into it, but this is basically uh, what we do. And um, the third problem that we had to deal with, uh, which was introducing the FNP, is what I sort of hinted when uh, I said that they used Pallier. So in Pallier, the plain text space is Zn, where n is, the multipl is a multiplication of two primes. So it's not a prime or a group. So the problem here, and we don't know how to deal with this attack, is essentially that uh, malicious Alice can basically, she chooses the secret key. So she knows the factorization of n. Um, so she, what basically she, she can do, she can come up with a, a polynomial q such that for some values, the evaluation of q, uh, q of t would not be co-prime with n. So if uh, Bob will, mul will multiply Q of T with some random R, this will not be random in the entire uh, N, but in some much smaller subgroup, which, give her, which may give her some information. We don't know how to uh, prove that she constructed the polynomial uh, correctly, but uh, using the Elgamal already solves this problem because uh, Elgamal is of prime or a group, so give us for free the solution for this problem. Um, so, just a quick overview of, of the protocol. This is really high level. We have that Bob sends the commitments uh, of his set, and then Ali sends the, pol the B polynomials uh, uh, encrypted. 
and then uh, Bob just evaluates every two polynomials that are chosen according to the, um, the balanced allocation hash function. Um, now the party has to run the pseudo function evaluation m times, which is the number of elements uh, in Bob's set. And finally, um, Alice is able to uh, decrypt and uh, check for consistency and output all the values that are consistent with uh, uh, Bob's computations. And uh, just for efficiency, so um, we inherit the efficiency of, from F and P according to the balanced allocation. Only uh, 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 Apart from the efficiency of the uh, oblivious PRF, well, basically in the, in our paper, in the paper that uh, we wrote, uh, we actually used uh, the or angle the pseudo function, which the amount of work is uh, uh, proportional to every bit in the input, not to every element, but to every bit. So this introduces uh, some overhead of the length of of each uh, of each element. Uh, today, I think there are some other uh, um, uh, computation of oblivious PRF that can work in, um, in constant amount of work total, not just for every bit. So uh, it could be much more efficient. And uh, just a uh, final remark, uh, note that if uh, the size of the side intersection can be leaked or can, is allowed to be learned by Bob, uh, then the entire uh, 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 the entire computation is proportional to the size of the of the set intersection, because you don't have to run oblivious theory for every value, just for the values that are in the intersection. And uh, that's it. Just for uh, to summarize, we have um, a protocol. Uh, I think the first protocol, so that uh, I know the first protocol uh, for the set intersection that works under standard assumptions, that achieves almost linear uh, efficiency in the set of in the uh, set sizes and is fully simulated both for malicious, can be even uh, usually secure, it's easy to show. We also uh, know how to show, uh, to use this technique to solve the set union problem and uh, that's it. Thank you.